Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupan Gagodya Guru Paramsha. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the Sambhu Vaishnavas and Vaishnavi, Manchakal Padri Prasarati, Pas Divya, Puditana, Pavadeva, Yesterday we began the subject of Naam Tattva, the glories of the Holy Name. And uh, because tomorrow is Radhastami, now we are moving to the subject of Radha Naam. Radha Naam is very confidential, very secret. But our great Paramarasik Acharya, Srila Shukadeva Goswami, being the intimate associate of Shilatiravika, 
being the very shuk of Radha of Srimati Radhika. Having Nishta in Radhika, he could not, though it should not be spoken in public, her great glory. He could not restrain himself. And here and there, in many places of Srimad Bhagavatam, he has hidden the Naam, the Roop, the Gun, the Leela, the form qualities, pastimes, associates, and the sweetness of Srimati Radhika throughout Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam. He did not speak directly, openly, because he would faint for six months in ecstasy. And the Prashit Maharaj, he only has seven days to live. <laughs> he has to speak Srimad Bhagavatam. If you go in ecstasy for six months, then how will Prashit Maharaj, she is Srimad Bhagavatam, and attain his perfection of life? Also, we should know that only the those who are Gauriya, Gauriya, the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by his mercy, they can enter into the mysteries of Radha's Mahabharata as it is revealed very secretly in Sri Bhagavata. So, Sri Sarup Damodaka Swami, he said, Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavera Stane. What's the next line, Maharaj? Rikanta Shukuru. Chaitanya Charani. Yes. You bring me back to life. Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavera Stane. Then what Pranama? Ujipad Sri Bhakti Vedanta Asha Maharaj. So the meaning is, If you want to read, study, recite Srimad Bhagavatam, then go and sit at the lotus feet of a pure Vaishnava and learn from them. Otherwise, it is not accessible. Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavarastani Eikanta Asvai Koro Chaitanya Charani and make one pointed shelter at the feet of Prema Purushottama Satchidanda and Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya hmm? Bhakta Gana Nitya Karo Sangha Tabito Janibe Siddhanta Samudra Taranga. So Dandaka Swami said, daily associate with the Gaura Priya Jana, the dear associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by daily associating with them and listening, gradually, gradually, what will happen? Tabito Janibe Siddhanta Samudra Tanga. You can enter into the waves of Siddhanta. The ocean of Siddhanta is not still, dynamic, moving. So, only those who have taken shelter of Mahaprabhu can realize how the glories of Radharani are there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Raksho dai chukulam hatam ki adidam yoga ribatma kriya margo va pakati krita ki adidam shishta rikam bhakiyat maidin yudda rakarikam ki adidam premujolaya mahan bhakte bhakta karim param bhagavatas chaitanya murti mstumaha. Our great Rasika Acharya Srila Prabhupada and the Saraswati Thakur, he is saying, Raksha Udaiti Kalamhatam, Supreme Lord appeared in the form of Lord Nishingadev and killed the Daitya and his associates, Hiranya Kashipo. But what benefit did anyone get from that? Did anyone get any benefit from that? Raksha Udaiti Kalamhatam, Lord Ramachandra came and killed Ravan and all of his associates in Lanka. But what benefit did anyone really get from it? Hmm? Yogari Vatma Kriya. 
Narayan Rishi incarnated and taught the path of yoga and jnana and sadhana. And uh, Kapil Dev incarnated and taught Sankhya philosophy. But what benefit did anyone get? Shri Stadikam Vapiyat Mahavishnu created the world and maintains the Dharma. But what was the point? Made in Yudha Dikari Kamki Adinam Premutvalaya Mahan. When the earth was taken from its orbit by Hiranyaksha and fell in the Gavadak ocean, the Lord Varahadev came and saved the world. But what was the use? Whatever any incarnation has ever done or ever given, it's all worthless without what? Premutvalaya Mahan. If Sri Krishna and Radhika are not combined in the form of Gaur Chandra and appear in this world to distribute Unnat Ujjwara Rasam Swapati Sriyam The Nikunda Shaiva of Simati Radhika in Vrindavan, then it would all be useless. So therefore, I am taking shelter of Satchinanda and Gauri. We cannot do it, but Prabhupada Saraswati, in his ecstasy of realizing how great is the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he can tell oh, all these other incarnations what have they done. Yeah. It's the, his ecstasy. And in comparison, what Mahaprabhu is giving, there is no comparison. Anarvita Acharin Charat was never given before. So, if you want to know what kind of nectar is there in Srimad Bhagavatam, Ekanta, Asrai Karu, Chaitanya Charani, be in the association of Gaur Piyajan, Mahaprabhu's devotees in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, and be in one-pointed devotion to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Then the possibility comes. Because, uh, Raso Gupta Eva Rasatmakam Apadyate. It is said that when Rasa is hidden, then it becomes very intense. Hmm? Rasa should be hidden, not open. And so Shukadev Goswami has hidden the Rasa of Radhika's Nam, Rup, Gun, Vila, Parikara, and all sweetness and qualities in Srimad Bhagavatam. Now someone may have a doubt. Oh, I have read it, but I did not see the glories of Radharani anywhere. Yes, yes. Because there's a process. Hmm? If I give you some Mahindi leaves, you know Mahindi? Who knows Mahindi? Yeah? They know Mahindi. They, in, if an uh, Indian lady or invading culture, before they get married, then their hands and their body has to be decorated with the Mahindi. Right, henna. Mm. So it may it's a red red patterns, very beautiful red patterns. But if you take the henna leaves, the mahindi, what color are they? Uh huh. Yeah. They're not red. So can you see the red, the rag in the mahindi leaf, in the henna leaves? You cannot see it. So in the same way, ordinary person, though it's there in Sri Lanka Bhagavatam, they cannot see. The rag, the anurag, the deep love of Radhika expressed there. Hmm? So there's, just as there's a process to experience the rag, the redness of the henna leaves, what is that? First, the sake of that girl who's being decorated. Then she'll have to come and grind up the leaves. Then make them into, crush into small um, paste. Small powder and paste, very small particles, crush them. And then she'll apply it on the hands of Hosaki. And then have to wait. And then after some time, then when it's removed, then you can see the rag, the redness of the leaves. So in the same way, when we come in the association of Rasik Vaishnavas, then they take each verse of Srinath Bhagavatam and they Take apart every syllable, every letter of Srimad Bhagavatam, 
कृष्ण तुम्हें बार बार तभी भूसा दूसरा प्रति श्लोक श्रीमद भागवतान इज ग्रेज एस कृष्ण इज द शेल्टर ऑफ एवरी थिंग श्रीमद भागवतान इज ऑल्सो द शेल्टर प्रति श्लोक इन एवरी वर्स नो अक्करे इन एवरी सिलेबल not one meaning in every syllable each syllable has many many meanings so in this way the rasik vaishnavas are taking the verses of shri mad bhagavatam and bringing out many many meanings and then the disciple whose heart has become the surface of his heart has become cleansed by guru seva and by the uh, chanting hari nam then that rasti vaishnava taking the many means in the shrimad bhagavata that paste will smear it on the clean heart of his disciple yeah? and then you have to wait yeah? that means for by gradually serving and hearing wait for what kada karisya si hanma kripa kada shavajana rather creep will come And when Radha's creeper will come, then tears will come from the eyes, and then wash up, wash away that paste, and there you will see shining the rag. Oh, in every word of Shri Mad Bhagavatam, the Anurag, the Mahabhag, the deep love, the form, the name, the qualities, the pastimes, and the sources of Shri Mad Bhagavatam will shine from all the verses of Shri Mad Bhagavatam. This is the process. So. This morning, I want to discuss a little about the tenth canto, Dasama Skanda, Krishna's smiling face, and how Radhika has been described there. So we'll come. You know, tenth canto, the first chapter, second chapter is all about the demigods praying for Krishna to appear and Krishna's appearance in the prison cell. Also, they directly that all that. Yeah? So the branch lila is starting here. Especially tenth canto, chapter five. So, in the beginning of the tenth canto, in the chapter five, there is the description of what happened when Krishna was born. Did anyone see our class on Jain Astami? Anyone? I will not describe all of that today. You can go back and listen to a few hours of the birth as time of Krishna. All the time. But I give a little. Because we want to discuss Radhika. Yeah. So there, in the first verse, Shukadev Goswami says, "Nandas tvatma japut panne jata lada mahamanaha ahu ya vipran veda gyan snato suci elankrita." Nanda Maharaj, Nandas tvatma japut panne, he was jata alada. He was overjoyed. He was completely overjoyed that a son had been born to him, Atmaja, his own son. Don't think Krishna is the son of Vasudev and Devaki. You can think like that if you are a Mathura Basi, but no Brahma Basi will say that Krishna is son of Vasudev and Devaki. That was Krishna's first expansion, Vasudev Krishna, Vaibha Prakash. Original Krishna is born from the womb of Yashoda. In Raja, and now he's been born. The Nanda Maharaj, he's so happy. Jatula da Mahamana. So on that morning, the his sister Sananda came from the Prasuti Gara, from the maternity ward where Krishna had been born, and came to Nanda Maharaj and said, "Oh, you have a son. A son has been born." And Nanda Maharaj was very happy because he was quite old. He was about eighty years old, and he had no child. And for a long time, he wanted a child. And he was even the other bridge bassies. They were doing yagyas. Usually, if you want a child, you can do a yagya to get a child. But the bridge bassies were so concerned that Nanda Maharaj should have a child that they were doing yagyas for him. Huh? Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda came together. Oh, do you know what they're doing? Yes, yes, they're doing yagyas for us to have a child. Huh? Nanda Maharaj said it will not be successful. Why not? Because by karma you can get karma is material. You can get an ordinary child. But in my dream, I saw a child that was so beautiful. No karma yagya could 
bring such a child with the very beautiful lotus eyes and reddish lips and the small teeth like drops of milk hmm? decorated with the kajo on his eyes and dots of kajo here on his palms of his hands and soles of his feet to protect him from the buji nasha you know, from an evil eye <laughs> with the ankle bells very very charming with fat cheeks beautiful baby I swore in my dream Never such a baby could come from Karma Kandriyakis. Madhya Shodas said, I heard that all desires can come true by strictly following Akadasi. So Nandama said, this is very good advice. And the two of them began to follow very strict Akadasi breath and Dwadasi breath for a whole year. And then one day, Madhya Shoda, Yashoda Devi, she served Nanda Maharaj and See Krishna in her womb. How do we know? Madhya Shodhu is a sadhvi. That's female sadhvi, it's called sadhvi. Madhya Shodhu is a sadhvi. She's very self restrained, very self controlled. All her senses are in control. But now she was feeling cravings. You know, pregnant women, they feel cravings. So now Madhya Shodhu was feeling cravings. I just. I want to have a big pile of makan with a tossy leaf on it, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Who was really hungry? <laughs> so makan chua was already there. But don't forget the tossy leaf. <laughs> so like this, a pregnancy was going on, and gradually this day came the um, in the... Krishna Paksha, in the dark fortnight of the month of Bhadra, on the Astami, at midnight, Krishna was born. So, Nanda Statma Jubhutpane Jat Lada Mahama. Oh, now hearing the news from his sister, Nanda Maharaj, is so happy. So, just at that time, Ahuya Vipram Veda Gyan. Then the Vipras, the Brahmins, who are Veda Gyan, know all the Vedas, how to do all the ceremonies, sanskars. They arrived there at the house of Nanda Maharaj. You know, like Kalki. He can do all the jackets and everything. When I see him, he reminds me of this past time. They call Vipra. You know what Vipra means? V means Vishesh, especially. Pra means Prati, return. Vipra, anything you give to a Brahmin will come back to you a thousand times in return. It's called Vipra. So the Brahmanas came there, telling them much, Badai, Badai, Badai. Congratulations, congratulations. Nanda Maharaj is very funny, he has very dry humor. So, why congratulations? Hmm? The Brahma said, Ah, you cannot cheat us. We know you have a son. Hmm? Because we have made an astrological calculation and your son was born last night. And we have made his horoscope. And then the Brahmins, they gave the horoscope to Nanda Maharaj and he took it and touched it to his head and then went and put it in a, in a respectable high place in his house. So Ahuya Vipraveda Gyan. Then Nanda Maharaj, he said, I never had a son before. What do I have to do now? Hmm? So the Vipra said, Well, first you have to do snan. Ahuya Vipraveda Gyan, snan, suchi, alankrita. Shukadeva Swami is describing everything. So then Nanda Maharaj set off for his ceremonial bath after a child is born. Oh, with Brahmanas chanting Vedic mantras, musicians beating drums and blowing horns. Actually, the horns were so ecstatic, they were just blowing themselves, even without the musicians. Jata hmm? Allah, so much joy. And he set off to the Jamuna. And he came there to the Ghat, and there was a big, high, you know, the piers that go out with the pagodas on the top. Hmm? This style, they are there. So he didn't go down the steps to get in the water, because Nanda Baba is a very good swimmer. So he went to the high tower, and then from there, he dived off. In and Perfect, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Dived into the water, only the water splashed like this. And that splash, it was like, you know, you're supposed to worship your ancestors by making tarpana, offerings of water. When Nanda Maharaj dove into the Jamuna and the water splashed to celebrate the appearance of his son, oh, it was like a tarpana and all his ancestors were dancing. 
Then he swam under water, long, long distance, and everyone was standing on the side. Look, what, what happened to Nanda Baba? Where's Nanda Baba? Hmm? They thought he may have been washed away in the current because, you know, last night was heavy rain. Huh? Heavy rain on the, the night Krishna was born. <laughs> so they're looking, looking, looking. And then suddenly Nanda Baba, in the middle of the Jamuna, he jumped up out of the water. Ha! I'm here! Everyone, Hey, come on, don't. he was swimming around. Said, There's no time, there are many things to do today, come on. Just take your bath, come out of the water. But he was in so much ecstasy. Nanda Baba is very grave. But now, because of his joy, Javalad Mahamana, he was playing in the water of Yamuna. So he quickly came to the side. Then he asked the brothers, what do you do next? Jata, with it's not a suchi. Suchi means you are not suchi, pure or clean, just by taking a bath. If you take a bath, you're not clean. When you're clean, after you put on your tilak. So then Nanda Maharaj with all mantras put on tilak in 12 parts of his body. And then he began to get dressed in very nice silk cloth with gold and silver threads in it. Put on a beautiful dhoti, very long, beautiful uh, shirt. And he took a big, colorful cloth and tied it around. He has like a belly kind of hanging down, so he tied it tight with his belly. <laughs> because it's a special day. <laughs> then he put rings on every toe and rings on every finger. He put on so many bangles, one bangle with a, with a elephant on it, then many, many bangles and closed it with a, a, a bangle with the mouth of a lion. And both arms. He put on beautiful earrings and beautiful garlands and he put on a turban. Very, very nice. Then he put on a white peacock feather on one side. White, pure white peacock. And on the other side a very beautiful ornament of a flower made out of jewels. Then he got the ends of his moustache to go there. <laughs> and he took a golden stick and he was ready. <laughs> Everyone said, Whoa! How beautiful! Nanda Stuttaja, Nanda Stuttmajukutpane, Jatalaramana. He was never a foppish person. You know, a foppish person, a dandy, they like to look extra suave and fashionable. So he just dressed in a very sober way. But now his son was born. All the ornaments. Some of his old friends, they began to criticize them because in Braj, you know, they criticize each other all the time. Because that's love. <laughs> you see, if you don't know someone, if you don't know someone very well, so, oh, yes, sir, excuse me, sir. Like this, you give respect. But when you're really close and you have love, then what do you do? Teasing. Teasing. Always teasing. So, Braj is like this. So, one old man said to another, blah, 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 look at this, bro. he's 80 years old and he's dressing like this. <laughs> And the Baba said, you may be old, but I'm not old. I just had a son. <laughs> <laughs> so, Snata Suchi Alankritaha. He's dead. Then Shukriva was saying how Nanda has decorated himself. This is a very long guitar of the appearance of Krishna. You can watch the lecture from Janmashtami. But Shukadev Goswami describes here in chapter 5 of, uh, of the 10th canto, in 18 verses, he describes Anantattva, the joy of the appearance of Krishna. Anantattva, in 18 verses. But in this verse, verse 18, he's saying something else. Tata Arabya Nandasya Brajasarva Samritiman. So, if you read the translation, then it will explain how, then, from that time, he's just been describing the celebration of Krishna's appearance. From that time, then, Braja, Braja Mandal, Nandasya of Nanda Maharaj, Sarvasam Vridhiman, became full of opulences, it was flourishing in every respect. Why? Because of the qualities. Its qualities. It is the eternal abode. It is the eternal abode of Hari. 
Rama Krida Mahundrapa, and it became Rama Krida, the plain place of Rama, Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Rama Krida Mahundrapa. So, this verse is very important because the celebration of the Nandotsav, after the first day when Krishna was born, then the family have to go into the stage of Asoj, their untouchability, after the birth of a child for 10 days. So the main celebration was after that. Hmm? And that is describing the, the next verses of Srimad Bhartan. And then at the end of that, Tata means then, then after that. So generally people say, Tata Arabya, after that time that Krishna was born, then Braj became full of all opulence and flourishing because it was the plain place of Lakshmi. But the actual meaning is, if you look at the sequence, there was, Krishna was born, there was a celebration, there were the ten days of Soch, then there was the major celebration of, with all the bridge buses in Nanmagal after the period of untouchability. Then Tata, then after that, Arabya. Hmm? Here, A, the A is Lam. It indicates Krishna's Shakti. Tata Arabya. After that, then Radharani was born. It was Radhastani. And from that moment that Radhika appeared in Braj, then it was flourishing and beautiful and became Radha Rama Kridam Abun. It became Rama Krida, the plain place of Rama. Rama, the goddess of fortune. So there's a rule in hermeneutics, in Shastric interpretation. And what is that? If the word Sri or Rama, Rama, is used in the context of Vaikuntha, it means Mahalakshmi. If the word Sri or Rama is used in the context of Ayodhya or Janakpuri, it means Sita. If the word Sri or Rama Rukmine, Dwaravattam tu, Radha, Brindavane, Bane. If the word Sri or Rama is used in the context of Dwarka, it refers to Rukmini. And if the word Sri is used in the context of Braj, Radha, Brindavane, Bane, it refers to Radha. So here, Shukadev Goswami is describing Radhastadi Mahamahotsavaki. So, the Rasikacharyas have said that this verse is the Mangala Charanam of the 10th canto. What kind, you know, Mangala Charanam means in the beginning there should be Vastu uh, Nidesh Atmaka Mangala Charanam, defining what is this poem about. Vastu Nidesh Mangala Charanam means an auspicious invocation which tells you what is this all really all about. It, Nirdesh defines the Vastu, the substance. And there should be a Namas Kriyatmak Mangala Charnam, paying obeisances to the object of your love, to your Ishtadev. So, because Shukadev Goswami is a great devotee of Radhika, actually says, Sri Shuka Uvacha. Sri Shuka Uvacha. Why Sri Shuka Uvacha? Sri means. Beautiful. Because when Shukadev Goswami described the appearance of Radharani, all his hairs were standing on end. He was covered in ripulation. You know, goosebumps. And tears were flowing from his eyes. He was trembling. So he became beautifully decorated with Asta Sattva So Sri Shuka Uvaja. And also, when a child is born and there's a ceremony, a festival to celebrate, in Braj, what do they do? They all sing and dance and throw yogurt. It's like holy but with yogurt. You should try it, it's amazing. Everyone's sitting all over the place, the yogurt everywhere. So, so they're doing like a holy with yogurt to celebrate. And because Shukadeva Goswami is so absorbed in the appearance pastimes of Radharani, just like perhaps you have heard, the one devotee, Srinivas Acharya, once in his meditation, he was meditating on the holy of Radha Krishna, and when he came out from his meditation, he had the colors on his cloth. So when Shukadeva Goswami was absorbed in seeing in his trance, 
the beautiful festival of Radhastami, the appearance of Shimati Radharani, where everyone was throwing yogurt. As Shukadeva Goswami was speaking to Brikshit Maharaj, the yogurt began to appear on his face and on his body. So, Sri Shukadeva he was beautified by the yogurt of that festival, which was from his trance manifesting there due to his intense brain. So, Sri Shukadeva Shukadev Goswami here is doing the Vastu Nirdesh Mangala Charnam and the um, Namaskriyatmaka Mangala Charnam. He's giving pranam to his Ishtadevi Radharani and he's defining what is this tenth canto all about. Radhe 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 Mangala Charnam, Vastu Nirdesh Atmaka, and Namaskriya Prakta Mangala Charnam, Shukadeva Swami is in ecstasy, and the Rama Kridam Bhunrapaha, this Braja became Ra, Rama Kridam. Rama is a name of Radhika, it means who makes Krishna relish Raman, amorous loving pastimes. So his name is Radha Raman, but he only becomes Radha Raman when the Rama Radhika. In, uh, infuses him with the Sringaras Madhurasa. So, then, so we can go to the next slide. If so, anyone has a doubt, how the pastimes of Radharani appear, describing Srimad Bhagavatam? First, we have shown Radhastami, the birth of Radhika is described. Now we come to another verse. This is the, now coming to chapter 8. Gargacharya was sent by Vasudev Maharaj to go to Gopal Mahavad and meet with Nanda Maharaj to do Krishna's Nam Karam Sanskar name giving ceremony. So it was done secretly in the Goshala because if it will be done openly then someone may say, oh, why is Vasudev Maharaj's Purohit, priest, doing the Nam Karam of Nanda Maharaj's son? And then they'll suspect that the son of Nanda Maharaj is the son of Vasudev. And then comes to try to harm him. So Vasudev Maharaj has sent Gargacharya to do this Nam Karan Sanskar secretly in the Gosha. Very appropriate for Gopal. So there, Gargacharya said to Nanda Maharaj, Tasman Nandatma Jo Yamte Narayana Samo Gune Suyakityanubhavina Gopayasya Samahita. The meaning is that, oh Nanda Maharaj, your son, Nandatmaja, means your son. So he's saying the actual Siddhanta that Krishna is the son of Nanda Maharaj, not Vasudev. Yeah. Narayan Asamogunai, he has qualities like Narayan. What does that mean? Siddhanta Trasta Vede V Srisa Krishna Sarupaya Rasama Krishna Krishna Rupa Mesha Rasastiti. It is said that from the point of view of Siddhanta, Krishna and Lord Narayan, they are made the same. They're both God. So they are both Bhagavan from the point of view of Tattva. But from the point of view of Rasa, Krishna is far, far superior. So Narayana Sumogunai means, O oh, Nanda Maharaj, from the point of view of Siddhanta, your son has qualities just like Narayana. He did, but he did not tell about, oh, but he's superior by Rasa. But he did give some hints. Then he's saying, You should take care of this boy. And if you take care of this boy, then all opulence, everything around him will become full of beauty. And fame. But the inner meaning of this is, Sriya is instrumental case. It can mean by, who is doing, or it can also mean with. So he has appeared in this world, Sriya, with Radhika. And who is Radhika? Kirtyanubhavena, the daughter of Kirtidamaya. Kirtyanubhavena means the daughter of Kirtidamaya. Gopayasva means keep it a secret. 
Keep it a secret. And do the yugo pasana, the service of, of the yugo. That is the instruction to us, the world. All the people of the world, Gavachari is indirectly telling, oh, Gopaya Sasma, secretly do yugo pasana, worship Krishna, Nandatmaja, along with Sri Kirtidatutri, the daughter of Kirtidanaya. So, then, that's a, in Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many names of Radharani there. So wherever you see Rama, wherever you see Sri, sometimes you see the word Gopi. But he Gopi means Radhika. Go means Rasa and P means Pivati. She who drinks all the Rasa of Krishna's sweetness, Gopi is Radhika. Gopi Jana Vallabha. Hmm? Jana means the other Gopis. Gopi means Radha. Gopi Jana. Radha and her Sakis. Gopi Jana. See? So Gopi in the Bhagavatam Shukadeva Goswami is hiding the identity of Radhika there. Sometimes he uses the mm, word Indira. Indira. Jayati Chaiti Kam Janmana Praja Sraja Indira Shashtadatrahi. This branch really became beautiful when it was decorated by Indira Radhika. Sometimes he uses the word Brajesha Sutta. Vaktam Brajesha Sutayora Novain Ujushtam Yavani Pita Manorakta Katakshamoksham. Oh, have you seen the two <laughs> here? Sutayor is in the dual case. It means the two sons of the king of Braj, Krishna and Balaram. But actually, it's referring, there are two kings of, not the two sons of the kings of Braj. The grammar can also be understood as the son and the daughter of the two kings, Nanda Maharaj and Prishubhana Maharaj. So, Gopis are saying, Vatram Brajesha Sutayo and the way in Udhish. So, in this way, many, many uh, ways, the glories of Radhika are described in various verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, oh, you can come to the next verse. Anita. Perhaps you know in the Rastalila, see Krishna. He was dancing with all Braj Gopis. But the, some of the Gopis, they became proud. Krishna is only dancing with me. And because of this, they were not giving the sufficient respect to Radharani. Radharani saw that Krishna was dancing with everyone. And she became in mad. And she wanted to leave, but then Krishna, he left with her. So Radha and Krishna left from the Rasalila. And the old Braj Gopis were searching here and there looking. So they were searching here and there, asking the trees, asking the creepers, asking Tosi Devi in the forest, oh, have you seen Krishna anywhere? But they thought, oh, the trees don't answer us. Why? Because they're male. And male, they cannot understand soft heart of woman. So they didn't answer. Kachit Tulsi Kalyani, Govinda Charna Priye, Sahatwali Kula with Brad, Dishaste Tepi, Priyochita. Oh, Tulsi, did you see Krishna? Tulsi did not give an answer also. Why? Because if someone is proud, they neglect others. So because she's always on the feet, Tulsi leaves are always on the feet of Krishna. Or on Krishna's garland. So they oh. She cannot understand our misfortune because she is so fortunate. How can a fortunate person understand how an unfortunate person feels? So there was, who will give mercy to them? So do you know who gave mercy to them? Brajaraj. The dust of Vrindavan gave mercy. Because looking down there on the, in the dust of Vrindavan, they saw Krishna's footprints. But next to the footprints of Krishna, very beautiful, clearly showing the signs of the chakra and the, the flag and the club and the swastika and so many other auspicious signs on Krishna's lotus feet which was quite deep because his, Krishna is heavier but next to Krishna's lotus footprints were some footprints which were more shallow, a lighter person and smaller and quite frankly more beautiful <laughs> and they thought oh, he, did, he left us all but he's left with another gopi.
So, some gopi spoke this verse. Anaya Radhi Toluna, Bhagavan Hari Ishwara, Yano Vihaya Govinda Prito Yam, Anaya Draha. Anaya means by this, by this gopi, Aradhi To. Hmm? Krishna must have been served most perfectly by this gopi. Why? Yano Vihaya Govinda Prito Yam, Anaya Draha. Krishna has abandoned all of us just to be with her. That doesn't mean that her love is more than any particular gopi of Vrindavan. That means her love is more than all of the gopis in Vrindavan put together. <laughs> Understand? Yeah. So they're amazed. Actually, it was not Radharani Sakis who spoke this verse. Because Radharani Sakis recognized Radharani's footprints. And seeing it, they became in so much ecstasy, they could not speak. <laughs> It wasn't Chandravali and her Sakis, because they also recognize Radharani's footprints. Because her Sakis are always looking to see where Krishna has been, to see if Radharani's footprints are there. You know, they're like detectives. <laughs> <laughs> all the groups, the rival groups, they're spying on each other all the time. So Chandravali's group, they also recognized, but they didn't say anything because they were so jealous they could not speak. <laughs> The Tatasta group, the neutral group, they saw, they also didn't say anything because they're Tatasta, they're neutral. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> so who spoke this? Uh, Surit Paksh. Hmm? The friendly group, Shamla and Hosaki, is their friends to Radharani's group here. And Shukadev Goswami is hearing Shamla and her group saying this verse and it's coming from his mouth. Anaya Radhito Lunam. He's almost speaking the name of Radha here. Glorifying her. As the supreme beloved of Sri Krishna. Answer. Good. Okay. This verse, very beautiful. Bahum Priyang Supadaya Grihita Padmo. Rama Jujas Tulasikari Kulam Dandai. And we amara iyavastarava pranamam kimbabi nandati charan prani avalokai. Wow. How much of a size in each verse of Sri Mekar? Can you see the name of Radhika then? I'll give you 10 seconds to find it. Priyamsa. Second line, first word, Ram, because it's Rama. Rama. Is a short, the first A is short and the second A is long. So that's a Rama. So that Rama actually means the Balaram. Hmm? Can you find the last word? The last word? Praniyah, okay. Priya, yes, correct, Maharaj. Priya, Priyatama. Priya is Radhika and Priyatama. Her most dear one is Priya Priyatama. So Priya is the name of Radhika, and this name of Radhika also appears many times in Srimad Bhagavatam. So Bahum Priyam Supadaya Vrihita Padmo Rama Nujastu Tulasikari Kshavadande. This is this very... Uh, how Radhika's glories are described here? I'll try to give a little vision. It's set in here, basically, Shukadev Goswami is saying that when the gopis were searching for Krishna, they found his footprints. Then they saw Radhika's footprints with him. And they were following that. And now they're trying to find where is Krishna and this very special gopi who is with him. Now this verse was actually spoken by the Manjuris. Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur said, Manjuris have spoken this verse. They're saying, hmm, Speaking to the trees, they saw that the trees were bowing their branches, were heavy with fruit and flowers, and they were bowing down. So seeing the trees bowing down, they thought that Krishna and his lover must have walked by this way, because the trees seeing them in ecstasy, they would, just like my hair standing on end, the trees burst into flower. And then the fruits of love appear, and then they become heavy with the flowers and fruits and they bow down to Radha and Krishna as they're walking through the forest. 
So when the manjari saw the trees in this condition of ecstasy, on tears, in the form of honey dripping from their, uh, their honeycomb of the bamboo bees. So when the manjari saw the trees in this condition, then they asked, have you seen Ramanuja? That means Anuja, the younger brother of Rama, Balaram. Have you seen the younger brother of Rama walking this way, Bahum, with his arm on the shoulder of Priyansa, on the shoulder of Radhika? Have you seen? He's got one, his left hand on the shoulder of Radhika, and Upadaya Grihita Padmo, and he's holding in his right hand a lotus flower. So Radhika is here, Krishna's got a lotus flower in his right hand, and they're walking through the forest and all the trees are in ecstasy. Uh, have you seen this? And Tulasali Kula Madante. They saw the, that there was a swarm of bees intoxicated, blind with intoxication and humming. Uh, the, the, the bees humming the pa, the fifth note. Sari Gama Pa 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 This note. So the bees are maddened. And they're maddened by what? Ali, Ali means B. Kula means there's a group. Ali Kula, Tulasi, they're maddened by the fragrance of Tulsi. Madanda, and they become under blind. And they're following them. So as Radha Krishna walked through, with, followed by Babu bees maddened, the Babu bees are not looking to see, to see Krishna or Radha. They're blinding in ecstasy. They close their Babu bee eyes and they're just following the fragrance. Hmm? And at that time, Ambiyamana, Yavastarava Pranaman, O trees, when you bow down to Radha and Krishna, Kimva Binandati, did they welcome you? Did they recognize you? Pranayava Lokan, by giving you a loving glance. Right? If someone comes and gives pranam to you, don't just walk off. Right? If someone comes and gives pranam to you, at least the advanced Vaishnava should, can, should look very mostly with a loving glance. There's no injunction that the Madhyam Adhikari has to return the pranam of a Krishna Adhikari. Actually. Because they may not understand and think, oh, he's like me. So, then that person may give a loving glance and when they stand up, give them an embrace. So, the Manjuris have a doubt whether or not Radha, Radha Krishna gave a loving glance to the trees when they bowed down. They have a doubt. That's why they're asking the question. Because if the trees bowed down and it was certain that Krishna would glance them, there would no no there would be no need to ask the question. Understand? This is this is called poetry, Dwani. The suggestion of the poetry. So in this verse, the Manjuris are thinking, oh, trees, Kinvabin and Krishna didn't accept your Pranams? Uh, Why? Because Ramanuja, he's the brother of Balaram. You know, Balaram is famous. What's Balaram famous for? Go to the museum in Mathura, where they have the ancient statues of Balaram. In the iconography of Balaram, he's always depicted with a goblet full of wine. Right? A goblet full of wine. You know, he drinks Varuni. Balaram is very famous for drinking Varuni and getting drunk. Right? You see, because he's the son of Vasudev and Rahini. That's the Madhu dynasty, Madhupuri. Madhupuri means the city of Lika. <laughs> Everyone in the Yadu dynasty are famous for getting drunk. Right? How did they disappear from this world? Getting drunk. Right? They all got drunk, right? <laughs> so, the Manjiris are saying, Raman who just, that bro younger brother of Balaram, then he was probably so drunk. He was so intoxicated, drinking the nectar of his heroine's lips, that when you get pronounced to him, he probably didn't even look at you. This is the rest of the book, you understand? Wow, wow. So, very, very beautiful. But the thing is, it said that the bumblebees are following the fragrance of the Tulsi. But it doesn't mention that Krishna is wearing the Tulsi garland. It just says they're following the fragrance of Tulsi. What is the meaning? Now if you study very carefully the Rasa, Rasa Panchidhyay, Krishna in this Leela wears three different garlands. 
First of all, he said, Upagiyaman ud kayan, vanita shatayutapa, bibrad malam vajantin vyacharan mandanam banam. When Krishna was singing, Upagiyaman ud kayan, and the gopis were singing in return, Krishna sings, then the gopis sing. Then Krishna sings, and the gopis sing. And in this way, they're kind of having a singing competition. Upagiyaman ud kayan. Yamani kuturuchi suchikantis chandrika baladi bhavikata sri. Satpadhali lalita kalagita pasyabhat kumudakara esha. Krishna said, he's singing, Oh, this is a beautiful night. And this clear, crystal clear lake is illuminated by the very beautiful rays of the moon. It's full of kumud flowers and satpadali. That means those who have satpada, six legs. That means bumblebees are humming and singing, so the atmosphere is so beautiful. Krishna singing. And when the gopis hear it, then they sing in return. You know, it's call and response. But because the gopis are so absorbed in Krishna, when they do the response, they change the meaning. It's no longer describing the beauty of the moon and the lake and the flowers and the bumblebees. Instead of saying, Yamini Kritaruchi Sutikantis Chandrika Baladibhavikata Sri, they say, Kamini Kritaruchi Sutikantis Chandrika Baladibhavikata Sri. Instead of saying, Shatpadali, Lalita Kalagita Pasyavati Kumudakara Asia, they say, Satpadali. There are three S's in Sanskrit. So they change the S from to S. And Satpadali means, Oh, Krishna is so beautiful on this night and he is singing poetry of Satpada, very beautiful composition. Pada means a line of poetry, so Krishna is singing in Satpada. So in this way, Krishna sings one thing, gopis do the return, only changing two syllables. And instead of glorifying the moon, Chandra Paksha, it becomes Krishna Paksha. Astonishing, so the Rasalila is going on like this, they are singing beautifully, Vanita Shata Yutapa in many yutas. That means Radharani's group, Chandravati's group, the Tatasta Paksh, Vipaksh, Suripaksh, all the groups are singing. And Vibrad Vajantim, Balam Vajantim. Krishna is wearing a Vajanti garland. Vajanti garland means five types of colored flowers and very long going down all the way to the feet. This is called a Vajanti garland. This is one garland. Okay, keep going through Rasapanta Jai. Then you come to the verse. Kachi tulsi kalyani govinda charna priyei sahatvali kula vibrat drishaste te priyochuta When Gopi said to Tosi, Oh Tosi, have you seen Krishna? They said, sahatvali kula vibrat wearing a garland of your leaves and mandaries. So this is Krishna. Krishna's got two garlands. The Vajanti Mala and now, when the gopis were searching, following the footprints of Radha and Krishna, and they found them, then again the Mandarin spoke. Apyena patya pagata priyaye vagatrais tanvan drisham saki sunevrite aptitova kantanga sanga kuchukum komaranditaya kundas raja kulapate apivati gandaha. They were walking through the forest and they saw some deer, female deer. The wives, the wives of the male deer or the female deer. And they saw that the eyes of the deer were huge. So when someone is you know, in ecstasy, then their pupils dilate. So they saw that the eyes of the deer were so huge. Why? Because they're in ecstasy. Now the Manjuris know how to get these big eyes. <laughs> how do Manjuris get these big eyes? Seeing Radha and Krishna. So the Manjuris start of a Bhute Shuyapasyat Bhagavat Bhava Natmanaha. This is the nature of the Mahabhagavat. They see their own mood in everyone else. So when the Manjuris saw the big eyes of the deer, they thought, Aha! You must have seen Radha and Krishna going this way in the forest. Hmm? So, Abhyena Bhakti Bhagata Priyayeva Priya, again Priya. Have you seen Krishna Priyayeva with his beloved Eva Gatta? Tanvan Drisham Saki Sunivrit Atitova. And then the deer looked at the Mantris 
and then looked the other way. And then looked at the Manjus and looked the other way. The Manjus said, Look, the deer want to show us where Radha and Krishna are hiding. So then the deer began to slowly walk away. And the Manjus started to follow that deer. <laughs> so gradually, gradually, they followed the deer to a particular place. And when they got to that particular place, suddenly the deer disappeared into the darkness of the forest. They ran. So then the Manjuri said, Ha! Ah, Radha Krishna, they must be hit somewhere here. Kandanga Sangha Gucha Kumkuma Ranjitaya Kundasraja Kulapate Abhivati Gandaha How do we know that Radha Krishna just must have been here a few minutes ago? Because we can smell a breeze was blowing and the breeze was carrying the fragrance. Kandanga Sangha Gucha Kumkuma Radharani's breast is decorated with kunku. Very beautiful vermilion is smeared on her breast. And kunda, uh, kunda straja means a garland of kunda, uh, kunda flowers. They're small white flowers, like jasmine, small white with a special fragrance. So the mantra is that smell the breeze and they're very familiar with the fragrance of Krishna's kunda garland. And they're also very familiar with the fragrance of the kunku on the body of cosmetic on the body of Radhika. And they could smell the two fragrances mixed together in the breeze. So then they ah and as they smelled that fragrance, they had the sporty of Radha Krishna's beauty. Because it Udipana. Udipana makes this the sporty. Actually very confidentially we can say that because the two fragrances were mixed together, completely mixed. That it was not only the Ganda Samyog, the meeting of fragrances, but it was Ganda Shankar, the actual mixture of two fragrances, completely mixed. So then, not only did they have the sporty of Radha and Krishna, but when they smelled the fruit, two fragrances mixed together, they had a sporty of Gorsu. Mm. Oh. Radha Krishna Mili Abadohu. Oh. 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 Uh, just for a moment. Uh, so then the Manjuris became stunned. Uh, where can we find Radha and Krishna? Uh, so Kundasraja Kulapate Apivati Ganda means on the, on the breeze there's a fragrance of Kunku and Kundasraja. A garland made of Kundu. So how many garlands does Krishna have now? Three. One. Vajayimala. One. Tosima and Jasmine, one kunda flower. So you know. Navajala the gatro, Nila sona chenitro, Mrigamada varapalo, Malati kunda malo. Radhika is wearing Malati, Krishna is wearing kunda flower. Tarala taruna veso, Nila pitambareso, Smarani brutani kunde. Radhika Krishna Chandra Nibrita Nikonja Astaka Rupa Vaskar So Radhika wears Malati garland Krishna wears Gunda garland So three garlands But now we're discussing this verse How Radhika is in this verse Vahum Priyams Upadaya Grihit Padmo Ramaj Tulasikali Kulamadanda the gopis are saying the bumblebees are blinded with intoxication following the fragrance of Tosi, but they didn't say Mala. So what is the Dwani? The Dwani, the hidden meaning of this beautiful poetry, gopi speaking poetry, naturally, without thinking, full of rasa. The meaning is this, that when Radha Krishna met and embraced and enjoyed their loving pastimes, Krishna's Vajanti Mala was broken and flowers scattered everywhere, on the flower bed in the kunj. His tosimala broke and went everywhere. His kundamala broke and went everywhere. So Krishna is not wearing any malas at all. But the secret is that when Radha and Krishna meet together, unite, then after that pastime, a very beautiful fragrance emanates from the Sri Vigra of Radhika. And that is the fragrance of Tosi. This is why Tosi. If Krishna said, Mm, tulasi Jalamatrena mm, Tulasi Jalamatrena Jalasya Kul Chukena Cha 
Vikrintes Atmanam Bhakte 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 Yo Bhakta Vatsala. If someone offers me a tossy leaf, I cannot find anything to repay them. I sell myself to that person. Why? Because the fragrance of tossy manjas is the fragrance that emanates from the body of Radhika after her meeting with Krishna. So here, Rama Nujas, Krishna is intoxicated from loving pastimes with Radhika. And the bees, they're not following to get honey from the Tosi Mantris. They're blind, they cannot see anything. But they're following the fragrance of Radhika as she's walking with Krishna's left arm on her shoulder and he's holding a lotus flower because the bumblebee is trying to land on the body of Radhika and Krishna's brushing them away. Bringing to Padma. This is the meaning of the verse. So in this way, the manager is only by smelling the fragrance and seeing the trees bowing down, they're having the sporty of Radha Krishna's beautiful one Bihar walking in the forest and how Radhika is the Swadina Bhata Kanaya, completely controlled Krishna and Krishna is embracing her and so you're driving away the bumblebees with a Grihita Padmo with a lotus flower in his hand. Who is it who said the reference? Is always not in the Bhagavad Yaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavera Stani Ekantara Soitya Chaitanya Kuchanani Those who take shelter of Mahaprabhu and be in the company of his brothers and Vaishnavas, then they will see when the verses of Bhagavatam are chewed and put on the heart of the pure heart of the disciple, then Radha's people will come and you'll see all the Leela of Radha Krishna there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Do you have time for a few more verses? Yes. I have to ask them. Yeah, because the managers, I don't want really to get on the wrong side of the managers. I think they're just... <laughs> we, we run into one more verse. One more verse. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What's going on? But there are three. <laughs> and I have to choose one. Oh my God. Oh. Now I become stunned by indecision. Ah. Paralyzed ah. by indecision. <laughs> the other two today? That's <laughs> joking. <laughs> so, then we'll do them in order. The next verse. Evam matya, this one. Evam madat odit loka veda swanam ivomai anuvritta evala maya paraksham vajatati roitam masuyatam mahata tapriyam priyaha. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds. Priya. Try to find. Priya. Priya. <laughs> Rather, his name is like at least. Five times in this verse. Priya. Mm-hmm. So Priya, yes. That's one. Another. I think they are. Swanam. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> Swa, his own. Yeah, actually, sometimes Radha's name is Atma because he's Krishna's Atma. Swa Atma. His own soul and so on. Okay, so the meaning of this verse is this. Perhaps you know that after some time, Krishna also abandoned Radhika. He'd enjoyed pastimes with her, but when he heard her sakis approaching, yeah, then Krishna suddenly disappeared and Radharani began to cry, Hanata, Ravana, Presta, Kwasi Kwasi Mahabuja, Dasaste Kripanayane. Sakke dasha sanidim. Ha nata. Oh my prana, the Lord of my pranas, my life. Ramana presta. The best of all Raman lovers. Kwasi, kwasi, where are you? Where are you? Mahabuja, with your strong arms. I will die unless you embrace me. You should embrace me once, otherwise I'll die. Krishna, she heard in a sporty Krishna says, it's too late now. I won't be able to come back in time to that. <laughs> so Radharani said, Dasi stay, Kripanai, oh, please be merciful to your Dasi. Krishna Prema, Eka E, Apurva Prabhav, Guru Samulaga Ke Kurai, Dasya Bhav. Krishna Prema has one unprecedented characteristic and that is he gives dasya bhav to everyone whether they're guru krishna's seniors lago krishna's juniors or sama krishna's equals so dasya bhav is common to all the bhavs 
So in separation, it's Madhurya Rasa, but Radhika feels, I am your, I am wretched. Dasya stay, Kripanaya me. Please give mercy to this wretched Dasi. Hmm? Krishna in his he said, look, I'm the son of a king. Why did you say, I, I said, let's go over here. You said I'm too tired, you should carry me. I'm the son of a king. You should not order me to carry you around. <laughs> So then Radhika says, Das is te gripanaya. Sake dasya sanidin. But you served me so closely like a saka, like an equal, that I was feeling in that way. Dasya sanidin. Please come back at once and give me your dasha. So actually, you know where Radharaman manifested? There's the place, the Prakat Stali of Radharaman. Right? You know that place? So that's the very tree where Krishna disappeared. Oh. And where Radhika, Radhika called, Hanata Ramana. Oh. And she fainted there. And this is why Krishna has appeared as Radha Ramana from the Shalakam Shila Kopal Patakaswami in that place. Oh. That's it. So then Krishna disappeared, and then the gopis found Radhika unconscious on the ground. They sprinkled some water and water back to sense, and then they were searching here and there for Krishna, but could not find him. They thought, oh, this son of Nandama is very tricky. If he doesn't want us to find him, then he'll be watching us. But as we go further into the forest looking for him, he'll recede further into the forest. <laughs> so we don't want to give any pain to his soft lotus feet walking around in the jungle. So we should not look any further. Let's come on the bank of Jamuna and engage in that activity that may have a chance to bring Krishna back to us. What is that? Mahasankirtan. So the gopis assembled on the bank of Jamuna and began to sing. Jayati Gopi. So then, at the last verse of Gopi Geet, when Radhika was about to die, really, she said, hmm? Oh Krishna, if I cannot serve you, then there's no need to stay alive. So though I'm young and my astrological chart says I have so many years left in my life, but I don't need it. So I'm going to donate this Ayu to you so you can have a longer life and be happy in Braj. Now I'm leaving. This is the meaning. Kurpani bi pramatidi babud babud ayu sham naha. Our Ayu, the remainder of our life, we're donating to you because we don't need it. And just as Radhika was about to give up her life, Krishna could not stop himself. And from his hiding place, he came out. Very humble, smiling slightly because he's embarrassed. Pitam holding his pitambar. That means when you make a mistake in Vedic culture, you have to take your cloth around your neck. And hold it like this. So Krishna, please forgive me for my mistake. This is why Vaishnavas always wear one cloth, this chada, on the shoulder. Because it's the sign of the humility. Oh, I have made a great mistake. I am wasting my life. Hari Hari Bifali Janama Goinda. Manusya Janama Paya Radha Krishna Nahabajiya. Janiya Saniya Bishakoinda. Alas. So Krishna is also. Galavastrakitanjali Oiveja. He said, When will I come before a Vaishnava holding a cross before my neck and begging for shelter and forgiveness for my foolishness and ignorance? So Krishna is doing Galavastrakitanjali, holding the cloth in his hands and coming very humbly. And at that moment, Sakshan Man Mata Man Mata, he looks so beautiful. He never looked so beautiful ever in his life. Because he was vanity. He was thinking, what if I come back and the gopis don't accept me? So Yoga Maya helps him. Yanmachri lao paikai sa yoga maya balam dasha Yoga Maya is the power to make the impossible possible. So Krishna at that moment had to look so beautiful, so charming, because he was afraid the gopis may not accept him. That Yoga Maya made Krishna so beautiful, it's impossible to be that beautiful. That's such a man and also Manmata Manmata means that Krishna himself is Manmata he is Cupid but the heart of Krishna is being churned by Radhika so that 
Krishna, who is more beautiful than Cupid, but his heart is in a complete turmoil, like a hurricane, like a cyclone, due to fear that Radhika will not accept him. He is man So Krishna came back. Then, the Sakis of Radhika and other Sakis, they said, Krishna, please, take a seat. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> They're not just going to, just, you think he's just come back, they'll accept him like that? No, no, no. <laughs> First, there should be an interrogation <laughs> of his intentions. So it's a very, very deep conversation. We have a week, we can discuss that next time. But when Gopis asked him, what kind of lover are you? This is one of the answers he gave. Evam mada torji loka veda. Swanam hivo mai anuvritaya over the gopis. For me, Marata, for me, Urjita Loka Veda, you gave up the path of Dharma, you gave up, which is described in the Vedas. You gave up all shyness and fear of the villagers and your relatives and your husbands and mother in laws and everyone. You gave up all shyness and patience and everything. Why? Only for me. And why did I dis- though you've given up everything to me, why did I leave you? Swanami Bomai Anuvritayebala. Only to increase your eagerness. Just like a poor, when a poor person by chance finds a diamond worth millions of dollars, then ah. Oh. But then if by accident he loses it, then he goes mad. And day and night he's just thinking, oh my diamond, the diamond. <laughs> oh my diamond. <laughs> So in the same way, Yathadana Lajan the name Dinaste, that's Chinte Anandi Pritona Veda. He doesn't know anything. So Krishna said, I disappear only to increase your love. But then Krishna realized, I failed. I tried to play a joke on you. You know, lovers they play jokes on each other. Oh well, I didn't see what she does. His brain is like this. So he wanted to, But what happens when he hid? All oh, gopis went into Divyum mad. They became mad in separation. They began enacting his pastimes. They even became black. Being absorbed in Krishna, they became Shankar. Krishna looked and thought, well, if they love me, I love them. I'm trying to reciprocate with them. But when he saw the, the blazing fire of their separation, then he realized, I cannot listen to that. So it was a mistake. But he's saying here, Masuita, don't have hostility against me. Forgive my offense. Why? priyam priya, because I am your beloved and you are my lover. So where there's love, then if some offense is made, you don't take offense. You just it's nothing. So Krishna's saying this. But here the most important line, Maya Praksham Bajata Tirovitam. Maya Praksham means, Maya means by me. Aparaksham, secretly. Bajata Tirovitam, I disappeared. I disappeared secretly, but don't become hostile to me. Don't be against me, I am your beloved. Now the deep meaning here is that Krishna, though he's speaking to all the gopis, there's an inner meaning which is only about Radhika. So, Ma, the word Ma, means Lakshmi. But in, you know, like the word Madhav, Dav means husband. Madhav, Madhav, the husband of Ma. You see? Ma can be also no. So Krishna is Madhav. No, no, you're not my husband. <laughs> So, but Ma is, in the, is Lakshmi, not only Rama, but also Ma means Lakshmi. And in the, in the instrumental case, it becomes a short A but long A, Maya. So it means with Ma, with Radhika. Maya Paroksham, Aparoksh means secretly. I secretly disappeared with Radha. I secretly disappeared with Radha. Why? Because I had Tatsuk Suki Bhav. Such a mood. I only wanted to give happiness to her. Tatsuk Suki Bhav. But then, Bajatati Rohitam, 
then I disappeared. When I disappeared, then I became the Shat Nayak. You know, there's Naika, the heroine, and Nayak, the hero. So there are, Krishna is the embodiment of 96 different types of hero. Rupa Goswami describes. But four are prominent. Dear Lalit, Dear Shant, uh, Dear Udata, and, and, uh, and Drista. And then these also divided into four. Uh, Dear Udata and Dear Dhata. Then these are divided into four. Shat, Drist, Anku, and Lalit. Hmm. Shat, Drist, Anku, Dear Lalit. So, Mm, sorry, Dakshina. Shat, Drist, Anupul, and Dakshina. So, among these, Krishna is sometimes Shat. That is the hero who does things that sometimes offend or give pain to the heroine. So, Krishna disappeared. He manifested his Shat Naikatra and it gave pain to Radharani. So, Krishna is apologizing here that. I was just giving you happiness, but then my Shatnaik Atwa came, and so I have some dosh, I have some fault in me of Anyabilas. There's some Anyabilas dosh in me, some other desire. I wanted to see how you would react in separation and drink the nectar of your Viraha Vila. Huh? How you cry, how you speak and express, how you love that you are hiding. When your heart, Radhika never speaks directly her love. In Braj, no one says, I love you. Actually, if anyone says, I love you, that means they're lusty and they love themselves. Huh? Why does love, the voice becomes a joke, you cannot express it. And it comes out in, a, in another way. But in separation, the heart breaks and the love pours out. Krishna, I said, I wanted to hear that viraha viraha. And that's why I became Shat Nayaka and I disappeared and I was drinking that. Please forgive me for my Anyabilas dosh. But Bajata Tirovitam, at that time when I disappeared, Bajata, I was still worshipping you. Aparoksh now means indirectly. Because Krishna was watching everything Radhika is doing and just trembling. I have never seen such love before. Lalita Katipilasa, Pavu Hasa, Pranaya Nirikshita, Kalpaturu Mana, Krittamana Krittavatta Unvadanda, Prakritima Agankila Yashya Bhopa Vantva. Vadu also is the name of Radharani appears many times in Shri Mabhagata. This verse is spoken by Bhishma. He said that at the time of Raslila, when gopis became mad in separation, they were imitating Krishna's pastimes. When Krishna saw that, then Adan Prakinin Kila Yasu Gopa Vadvada. Though Krishna is Siddha, he's perfect. When he saw the loving separation of gopis, he was changed forever. And that Krishna who was Siddha became Su Siddha. More perfect. Krishna cannot know, he cannot realize himself without experiencing Praja Gopi's brain, especially Radhika's brain. So here he's saying, Maya, he Maya means Oh Ma, Oh. God is the fortune of Braj, the Lakshmi of Braja. I disappeared with you to enjoy pastimes with you, Aparoksham, alone. Out of Tatsuk Suki Bhav. But then, due to my own fault of Anyabilas Dosh, I became Shat Nayaka, Bajata Tirovitam, and I also left you. But at that time, I was always do also doing your bhajan, Aparoksh, indirectly, by relishing your Virahavila. So Masuyatam, please don't be hostile towards me. Tat priyam priya. I am your lover and you are my beloved. Bale Vrindavan Vihai Lala Ki Jai Bale Saniwari Ki Jai 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 Sri Radhe More sweet things coming to you. Classes, I made you taste the danta to increase your digestive power. <laughs> but from now on in this festival, only rasa. So, okay, we'll continue.
in the evening, and we want to say something also about the glories of Sakis and Lalita, because it's Lalita Satami.